You know, the Bible says that there was a certain man from Cyrene and his name was Simon. And he was just passing by, the Bible says. And he was coming into the city from the country. And it says, they, being the Roman soldiers, forced him to carry the cross. It's, it shows up in three out of the four Gospels. It shows up in, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And we can throw up the next one on there, too, because they, they say slightly different things, but they say the same thing. There's different, like, descriptors. And this one says, as the soldiers led Jesus away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. They beat Jesus with Jesus, crown of thorns, they hit him, busted him up, and made him carry the cross. Physically, mentally, they mocked him, they ridiculed him, they challenged him, they challenged his authority, and made him carry the cross. See, what they did for a crucifixion was after they beat you, they made you carry the cross through the city, through the neighborhoods, for people to watch. But they had had too much fun. And they beat him to a point where they started questioning, can this man actually get to where he needs to go? Can we get him and the cross where it needs to be? The people got part of their show, but it wasn't done yet. And you can't just have this man die here. They, they look, they're looking for a crucifixion. People want to see this. So what do we do? So they find Simon. And they make him do it. They make him carry the cross. Simon is from Cyrene. He's not from Jerusalem. This city is now, it's, it's Libya. It's on the other side of Egypt. This man is a foreigner. The Bible doesn't say if he's a Jew or not. The Bible doesn't say if he was there for Passover or not, or if he was there for work, or whatever his reason for being there. But they saw him pass by. He was going in as they were going out. And they said, you, take it. And they put it on him. They forced him into labor and made him carry the cross for Jesus. You ever been forced to carry something that isn't yours? You didn't ask for it. You didn't volunteer for it. But it was put on your shoulders. That sounds like something I can relate to. Extra work being given to you, you don't know why. Beyond that, you might be doing somebody else's work and they still get the credit. Life circumstances just come out of nowhere. You've been fine your whole life, but at 32, 33, 40, 50, 55, all of a sudden, you have sunk into such a deep depression and you never struggled with depression before, but you don't know how to get out. Your daughter pregnant unexpectedly you pregnant unexpectedly I didn't plan for this this wasn't a part of my life plan I didn't wake up this morning thinking that I would have to go ahead and take a test and tell me that there is a baby inside of me that I'm gonna have to raise now you didn't wake up this morning thinking that the doctor's report was gonna say cancer You didn't ask for this. You didn't beg for it. You didn't plead for it. You didn't volunteer for it. And beyond that, now you have to be a part of the tour of the city for people to see you and remember you not just by your name, but by where you come from. They know he is Simon from Cyrene. How do you know a foreigner's name, an outsider's name? You ask. You ask around. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Why does he have it? Is he a criminal too? Is he associated with them too? 
is, is, is he a follower of Christ too? Who is he? Why does he have it? And beyond that, here's the worst part. You don't get to die. You don't get to have people stop talking about you. You're still alive and people are going to look at you while you're still in Jerusalem. And then word is going to carry and people travel. And then they're going to tell you, they're going to be like, wait, you're that Simon? Why were you carrying that cross, man? What did you do? What did you do to deserve it? He didn't ask for it. But in the Bible, Jesus says to his disciples, if you want to be my disciple, carry your cross, take up your cross daily and follow me. Let me actually go ahead and get it right. It says, whoever wants to be my disciple first must deny themselves, must take up their cross and follow me. You got to deny yourself. You got to take up your cross and you have to follow him. He told that to the disciples. He didn't tell that to Simon. He told that to his followers. He didn't tell that to a foreigner. But Simon yet is still called to take up a cross that isn't his. But wait, Pastor Danny, are you telling me that I have to not only take up my cross, but I have to take up somebody else's cross too? I gotta take up the cross of circumstances that I didn't ask for, plan for, prepare for, train for. Is that what you're telling me to do? Because I carry my cross every day. And I can't get that sucker past two inches a day. It's way too heavy. But he says, take up your cross daily. Deny yourself daily. Follow me daily. Not just when it's convenient. Not just when the time is right. Not just when life's load is easy. Not just when the cross looks small. You know, this was my third option of crosses. This cross is significantly smaller than the one that we have up here that pastor has us put stuff on. Beyond that, they found a second cross that seems thinner, but yet is heavier. Explain that to me. (laughs) Then I felt this cross and I said, this is the one. Because it's lighter. And I don't work out much. (laughs) It isn't that how it goes though? Yes, God, I'll take up my cross as long as it's with easy people. Yep, I'll take up my cross as long as there's a pay raise at the end of it. Yes, I'll take up my cross on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Yes, I'll take up my cross as long as my kid act right. Yes, I'll take up my cross as long as you take care of me. As long as I feel like, like life is going my way, I'll take up the cross doesn't say that he doesn't say take up your cross just on Sundays he doesn't say take up your cross privately he doesn't say boast on yourself and then take up the cross he doesn't say take up the cross and do what you want to do deny yourself take up your cross daily and follow me follow me but this thing's heavy I can't even get it to where I need to go I need help I need help see church isn't the source it's an oasis that has the source it's an outlet that has the source it is a plug for the source let me go ahead and teach you some slang say the plug Jesus the plug. We're going to make a shirt that says Jesus the plug. For those of you over, the plug means the source. This means where I, where I get, I get my, my refill. It's where I get what I need. Now you guys learned something today. You'll be like, I don't remember any of the scripture, but I remember the plug. You want Teenagers, you're going to go ahead and have 50-year-olds saying, you the plug. You the plug. But it's not, this church is a place to get refilled. It's a place to plug in and get the source. But you have a mobile source wherever you go. You have the Bible. Beyond that, you have the Holy Spirit that the Bible says resides in you. Okay? You don't just come here to get filled up and to learn and to be stretched and to develop. Okay? You can go wherever you are and plug in. Plug in. 
See, Simon is both unfortunate and fortunate because he gets to experience and engage in firsthand, front row experience, the consequences of sin. Jesus did that for our sin. He did that for our sin. And Simon gets to be a part of it. One sentence, three books, one sentence each. Simon from Cyrene was forced to take up the cross and carry it and follow Jesus. That's crazy to me. Don't lose out on those little blurbs, those little moments that are hidden sometimes in bigger events, in bigger, longer chapters, dig in, dig in. We are a part of the most Bible literate generation now. Dig in, it can't be that way. Jehovah Witnesses know what's up, Muslims know what's up, okay? Everybody knows what's up but us. They're ready to go, brought up at a young age to learn their faith and their belief system and be able to talk about it, be able to recite it, we gotta step up. Beyond that, we gotta grow up. I said it this morning, I said, it's not about having you go from, from, from a year old Christian to a 30 year old Christian, it doesn't work that way. You gotta be developed, you gotta practice, you gotta try. I said it's like my baby, I can't expect her to all of a sudden just be able to have uh, the support of her neck work out. It's, it's daily, it's constantly this, every day, every day. <laughs> And I'll be like, just hold up your head. Just grab the bottle and take it yourself. It's three in the morning. Just do it, dude. Just, you got this. Do it. Okay? At some point in life, you got to be bottle fed. At some point in life, you got to go ahead and hold your head up, and then you got to take your own bottle. At some point in life, you got to ask and say that you need to be fed. You got to cry for it. But at some point, you can go ahead and go to the fridge and take it yourself. Okay? You need to start going ahead and taking it yourself. Open up the Bible. Become a part of the Bible plan. You got a Bible app, you got a phone. Go ahead and and download it, use it, open it up. Go ahead and get connected to the source. So we're called to take up our cross. So I wanna challenge you right now, you were given a cross as you came in. And there are things that happen unexpectedly in life. And there are things that we can, can relate to, apply to our lives. Uh, on how, how Jesus had to carry his cross, the ridicule, the persecution, the mockery, all of that. Whatever that is, I want you to take one quick moment and I want you to, to write one word that describes your cross right now. One word that describes the cross that you are carrying right now. I know you can write sentences. I know you can make lists. Just do one word for me. Whatever that may be, how would you des- describe the cross that you're carrying? And I would even say this. If you don't know, right, I don't know. That's okay too. It's okay to not know. Father God, I come before you and I thank you for what you've done so far. I thank you for what you did this morning. I thank you for what you're going to do tonight. And I thank you for what you're going to do when we leave this place. In the in between, in the mundane Monday, I thank you already in advance. And the crazy part is this too, God, I thank you for the cross that you've asked me to bear. It sounds illogical. I got to work on it because I don't always feel like it, but I thank you for that cross. And I thank you that ultimately you took up the cross for me. You took the cross in my place. So I pray today that we would have open ears, open minds, and open hearts to receive the word that you have for us. I pray that you would remove me from the equation. I pray that you would take place, that you would take hold of my tongue, that you would take hold of my thoughts, and that you would help me to speak your word clearly and effectively. Have your way in this place, and in your name we pray. Amen. So even as the service continues, go ahead and take a moment and write down. If something didn't come to you at that point, go ahead and you can write it down. If not, go ahead and take another side of the cross. Leave one side blank because we're going to use it later. But really quick, before I even jump in any further, I need to, have to, honor the head of this house. So can we go ahead and give it up for our great, amazing pastor, Pastor Jeff Hill? Not here tonight, 
always deserves a break. He's with family right now. Keep him in your prayers, safe travels, but we always got to honor the head of this house. We always got to pay respect where it's due. As we don't have that in this culture in this day and age anymore, so we got to do it as much as possible, okay? It is something that you definitely can learn. If you haven't done it, do it. Yeah, yeah. Beyond that, we got to go ahead and honor the first lady of this house, Monica Hill, our pastor's wife. Again, she does what none of us have to do, which is deal with our pastor. <laughs> Again, there are these ins and out, behind the curtain things that, that we don't see. And she sees and she is called to help and carry her husband, help and motivate and encourage her husband. And again, that is a task that I am glad I am not having to bear. So we have to give it up for her. So one more time, can we honor our first lady? So make sure every day, every day, every day that we lift up our pastor and his wife in prayer because they have a huge task in front of them to always lead a group of knuckleheads that, I mean, anything and everything can and will happen. There are curveballs thrown every day. There is so much pressure that we got to make sure that we pray for them. We lift them up in prayer. Okay. Next thing too, she's, she's in the back uh, dealing with our daughter, but can we give it up for my wife, Crystal? Love you, appreciate you. You're hotter than the day I met you. Okay, I heard too many men shouting on that one. Yeah, I don't know. So let's jump in. Okay, we got about three hours. Okay. Growing up, I thought that Simon, mentioned here in the Bible, was a disciple. Okay. I thought that it made sense for him to carry the cross disciple and follower of Christ, going ahead, being there in the crowd, being spotted by a Roman soldier and somebody going, hey, he follows him. I've seen him with him before. I've seen him while, while he was, was uh, in the crowd of people. I've, I've seen him with him. So as a kid, it made sense that, that to me that this would be Simon the disciple. Well, it came a time at an age that I'm not going to disclose to you because I'm not too proud of how old I was when I found out that it was a completely different Simon. So dig into the Bible, people. Ask questions. Ask why. We got Google at the palm of our hand. Use it. Please learn. Because again, I thought that this guy was a completely different guy. And so it made sense to me. And then all of a sudden I find out that he's a stranger to the land. He's a foreigner. He may or may not be a Jew. He's not a disciple. More than likely, he doesn't know who Jesus is. And yet he was called to carry the cross. So you got to ask why. You got to ask why. See, the first thing you need to know is that Simon carried a cross that was intended for him. Okay? Regardless of whether he was Jew or Gentile, regardless of whether he was a a follower or not, we are all, we we were all intended to carry that cross for our sins, for our transgressions. We were all called to death. We were all called because of our sin to go to hell. We were all called to bear the cross. So whether Simon knew it or not, it was actually his cross to bear. But thank God that Jesus stepped in. See, he personally may not have have, uh, been told that he needed to take up the cross. But Jesus, again, would be leaving Simon, like us, with a ransom over his life that still needed to be paid, have the opportunity to carry the cross. The cross was intended for us, but Jesus paid the price. Simon gets to experience a piece of what was intended for him, for me, and for you. But I love this. Because you would see it as an outsider saying, but he, it's like Judas, he carried the cross for Jesus to his death. Right? Judas betrayed Jesus so he would have to die. All right? Take a step in. Because you're seeing that from out here. Take a step closer. He did not carry the cross to Jesus' death. He carried the cross to our salvation. Okay? This is not a tool of death. This is a key to salvation. This is a key to eternity. This is a key to heaven. This was a tool that was used for our salvation. 
So you, it's all about perspective. You got to pay attention to that. See, Jesus calls us to take up our cross. And when he does that, he calls us to take part in the sufferings that he had to endure. That's a part of what the cross also represents. The suffering. So if Jesus suffered, don't think you won't. All of a sudden, you come here, you get this revelation, you get this heartfelt moment, your heart is full, you're full of joy, you feel life change, but yet life doesn't change. Life circumstances don't change. And you go, wait, I thought I was supposed to be walking in favor. I thought everything was supposed to be, nobody said it was supposed to be easy. Where did you hear that? Let me go ahead and clear something up. It's not supposed to be easy. If anything, it probably would be harder. I had a teenager come to me. It seems like since I came to church, life's just gotten harder. I said, or did you have wool over your eyes not seeing the things that were happening in your life? And now you have vision. Now you have clear vision and you're seeing all the different areas in your life that need to be worked through, that need to be broken, that need to, 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 to be strengthened, to need to be prayed for. Maybe that's what it is. But don't think that because we're Christians that we're not called to also suffer with Christ. That's what the Bible says. So if he was ridiculed, you might be ridiculed. If he was judged, you might be judged. If he was set apart and secluded, you might be set apart and secluded. But why? Why are all my friends turning away from me? Why is my family denying me? Why are people making fun of me? Why are people talking about me? Why are they doing all that? See, maybe the ridicule is actually the attention for your uniqueness because you stand out. Maybe the judgment is probably based off of someone's envy and not necessarily what you have done, but what Jesus has done in you. Maybe the seclusion is actually consecration. You're called to be set apart. You're called to look different. You're called to sound different. You're called to be different. When people see you, they, they are going to see light. Light is completely different from darkness. Light is also attractive. So if people aren't attracted to you, I question the wattage of your light. I don't need a dim light trying to light my house. I need to see. But people walk towards the light. There is something internally that people want to see the light. They need positivity. The world is actually tired, tired of of the negative, of the negative news. Yet it is very easy to be attracted to it and move towards it and lean toward it because it's easy. But the world yearns for something that's positive. The world yearns for something that is new, that is different, that, that, that actually fills the gaps that I have in my life. Beyond that, Jesus just doesn't fill holes and gaps. He completely takes out, removes, and then he is. He becomes the, the gap. He becomes what you need. So I also want to clarify that too. But again, if Jesus suffered, don't think that you won't have to. He suffered. So will you. So will you. So Simon did technically carry a cross that was meant for him. But even in the natural, he carried a cross that was not meant for him. In the natural, he is just passing through, walking back into the city, a foreigner of the land, doesn't even know Jesus. And yet he is called, he is called to carry a cross that isn't his. He's not a resident of Jerusalem. He's just visiting. It might be for work. It might be to celebrate Passover. We don't know. It doesn't say. This wasn't his cross to bear. But he bore the cross in a foreign land before he went home. I love that. One sentence, and you can grab so much if you just keep asking questions. Keep asking questions. He is a foreigner that bears the cross, that bears a burden before he goes home. I can relate to that. And so can you. Don't call this home. Don't call this home. You are a foreigner in this land that is called to carry a cross before you go home, okay? Don't call this home. The reason why you don't understand why you gotta go through these sufferings is because this isn't home. This isn't perfect. Home is perfect. Home is where we get to kick it and relax with God and with Jesus. Home is where we get to be and just celebrate and sing and be a part of the biggest choir ever. Home is where we get to go ahead and be face to face with our God and our creator and just go ahead and be enveloped by him completely. You're called to be a foreigner that's different that carries the cross before you go home. See, it's usual in this time for a criminal accused to carry his cross to his crucifixion. If that's what you've been convicted to do, you gotta carry it. 
So that's fine. They, you're, you're, you're going to carry this cross through the city, through the neighborhoods, people looking at you, laughing, you asking questions, spitting on you. They cheer for joy because some, also sometimes we just do love to see people go ahead and get theirs, right? But somebody being given a cross that is not theirs is unheard of, ridiculous, scandalous. It don't make no sense. Why would you ever do that? That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. And not only that, you wouldn't want that because the cross... In the natural, in this time, is disgrace. It's public disgrace, public shame. So while we just have one sentence to work on, I can only imagine Simon's reaction. No, no thank you. Not for me, not this one. Mm -mm. Inside, why inside? Because you're not going to say no to a Roman soldier. You're not going to say no to a Roman soldier. Because you might be put to death. So he probably said, okay, yeah, for sure. I got, I, mm-hmm, yes, I will. But inside he's like, no, 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 no. No, this isn't mine. This isn't for me. I didn't do this. I'm not even from this land. I don't know this dude. Go ahead and take Jake. Take Jake. Jake lives here. Okay, Jake probably knows him. Jake probably been healed by him. Go ahead, take him. Take him. <laughs> It's like when the people volunteer for stuff and you go like this and you make everybody else take a step forward. That was probably Simon. Like, it's not mine. I don't want that. I think, well, again, you got you to, 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 to make some assumptions. Um, but I don't think it's too far off from our natural reaction to want to deny that, to not want to be a part of that. But the Passion of the Christ does a pretty, I think it does a pretty good job in, in what I would, commu- to communicate what I think Simon would react. In the movie, he's told to take the cross, and he says no, and declines, and then they tell him, take up the cross. And he says, all right, but I want everybody to know, this is not my cross to bear. I did nothing to deserve this. I have not been accused of anything. I'm doing it because I'm told to do it. I think that's a pretty, I feel like that would probably be his response because that would probably be my response if I had to do it. I was compelled and forced to do it and I had to walk by people that were going to talk about it afterwards. But sometimes that's what we do too. Hey, this isn't mine. It's not actually mine. It's my sister's, it's my brother's, it's my cousin's problem, it's my mom's problem, it was my parents' fault. It's somebody else's, it's not mine. It's not mine, I don't want this. See, it's not written, but let's be for real. What would you do? Let's take it a step further. What do you actually do? Because every day you're called to publicly take up your cross. But do you? Do you take up the cross every day? Because again, you can't deny seeing somebody with this. This is big. This is bulky. This takes up room. This can't get through doorways. This is evident when you're carrying it. Is it evident when you take up your cross daily? Do people see it? Do people notice it? Because this cross is just a representation. That's all this is. This isn't actually your cross. But is that what you do? Is this this where you keep it? Or is it on a chain and you keep it down here? Are you even just ashamed of a symbol that's, that's on a chain on here? And you'd be like, well, it's not really like... It's not a part of our uniform or whatever. Come on, man. I'm not talking about an actual little cross. I'm talking about your daily living. Do people see the cross you bear? Do people see there's something different about you? Do people see that there's something that you're carrying, that you're meant to carry, that you're called to carry, commanded to carry, if you're going to actually be a disciple? Do people see a disciple in you? Do people see a follower of Christ in you? Yes or no? Or are you a private Christian? You worship Jesus on Sunday, maybe on Wednesday, if it works with my, my schedule. See, but I took it a step further because I don't really believe that there can be a private Christian. Because we're, yeah, we're, we're called to do things publicly, but I know me in private. And my flesh wins 10, time, 10 times out of 10 in private. So you can't even carry your cross privately. You're going to put that sucker down quick when you're called, going ahead and called to do something else. Whatever it may be. Your desires outweigh your spirit in private. 
Think about it. Don't make me say booty call from the altar. Mm? You give that two o'clock phone call? Mm? It's just a question mark at this point. Mm? I'm hitting somebody's life hard today. Okay. What is, it doesn't even have to just be that. Complacency, laziness, lack of excellence. You don't strive no more. You don't thrive no more. You're cool with being mediocre. That's not what God's called you to do. And that's why it's not a cross that you have on your back. It's just your burden that you're carrying. And you're just carrying a burden just like everybody else. So you fit right in. But people who carry the cross are identifiable. Be identifiable this week. Stand out this week. Let people ask questions this week. Let people talk about you this week. The Bible knows that his name is Simon and he's from Cyrene. They're going to know what your name is and what church you go to by the end of this week because you got to stand out. It's time for you to stand out. Stop being a private Christian. It's time for you to stand out. Stop saying that I just don't really know. You know what we're called to do. Love God, love people, teach others. We preach it every single Sunday. Your heart might even be tugged. He might have had compassion on Jesus and been like, that dude can't even make it. If anything, I'll just say that I've done a good deed and I helped him. Because there might be something in your spirit that draws you, draws you, pulls you to serve, pulls you to love, pulls you to hug on people, pulls you to give more, pulls you to worship, pulls you to, to, to invite people. There might be something in your spirit that does it, but then our flesh wants to recoil, wants to run away and retreat. So your spirit might be willing, but your flesh hides that unless you're constrained to do it. Unless you're, what the Bible says, compelled to do it. Unless you're forced to do it. So I don't have to, but I have to. He was forced to do it. And sometimes it may seem like you're being forced to do some of the things that we do here. Ah, I just feel like I'm forced to give. Don't give, dude. I feel like I'm forced to serve. If it's not in your heart, then don't do it. That's fine. But I'm telling you, when you look ahead at the people that are ahead of you, we're going to talk about this in a moment, and they're teaching you how to do something, and they're encouraging you, and they're keeping you accountable, and they're giving you scriptures daily, and they're telling you to pray daily, and they're telling you to come to Wednesday night, and they're telling you to come to Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and they're telling you to do all these things. Do it. Just do it because you're told first. It's got to become something that you become disciplined in before it becomes a part of your life. Yet you're like, I'm too busy. I'm too busy to read the Bible, Pastor Danny. You don't know my life. You don't know my schedule. It's packed. I don't got time to do it. I got these crazy kids up in this house. They keep pulling on me, trying to climb on me. They constantly cry for food. They're always pooping in their diaper. I don't got time for that. You don't know my work schedule. You don't know that I'm working 18 hour days. You don't know that I'm working 14 jobs. You don't. (laughs) You don't know that. You don't know anything about me. You don't know what I have to go through. You, I don't. But I'm telling you what I do know that you need to do. My circumstances don't determine, don't determine my disciplines. They don't determine the things that I work on. They don't determine my relationship with God and how closer I get. I either am going to have a successful, really good relationship where I'm getting closer and closer to God or I'm not. I'm either going to work on a relationship with my wife or I'm not. I'm either going to love my wife or I'm not. I'm either going to go ahead and show my my love for my wife through actions or I'm not. doesn't matter the type of work day I had. Is that a cause to not say I love you and talk to my wife? It doesn't matter what life just hit me with. Does that mean that I don't change the diaper of my baby and let her just sit in it? No, you do things because you got to. I don't want to, but I have to, I need to, and I probably should. But see, the same thing goes for Jesus. This is why it doesn't make sense for Jesus to carry our cross. That cross was intended for us. Death was intended for us. Hell was intended for us, but yet Jesus carried the cross. We don't want to carry it. Simon didn't want to carry it. The Romans wouldn't carry it. The Pharisees didn't want to carry it. His own accusers wouldn't even get him to the part where they wanted to see him die. Why? 
Because even though the devil wants you to lose, not even he would carry your cross of disgrace and of shame. He wouldn't do that for you. Let me take... Your flesh, your desires, your bad relationship, your bad upbringing will not carry the cross for you. The devil that wants you to turn away from Jesus won't take the cross in the direction he wants you to go in. He won't carry the cross for you. That's why it's a big deal, and that's why we celebrate the one who didn't deserve it, that took up our cross for our sin, for our shame. It wasn't intended for him, but he did it anyways, and he was the only one willing to do it. We celebrate a God who loved us so much that he gave his son. He gave his son, his one and only son, for you and for me. Those people won't carry your cross, but Jesus did. We were supposed to carry the cross, but Jesus stepped in the middle. And he wasn't just passing by. He did it on purpose, and he did it with purpose. So in response, he asked us to carry our cross. But get this, the crazy part about carrying our cross daily for him is that his burden, the Bible says, is light. It shouldn't feel heavy. It should stick out. It may not always feel convenient. But he took the cross that was heavy so that you wouldn't have to. It may feel heavy, it may weigh down at times, but his burden, the Bible says, is light. His burden is light. So if his burden is light and yet you feel like it's heavy, it might be your burdens that you're still carrying that are heavy. Have you ever had to do somebody else's work and give them the credit and see them get the promotion and keep your mouth closed? That's what he did for you. He carried the cross for you And every day he goes before your judgment and says, no, his debt's been paid. No, her debt's been paid. Giving us the credit. Every day he takes up the cross and he dies for us. And and what God sees through his blood over us is purification. Something that's pure. Something that's righteous. He doesn't see our sin because if he saw our sin then we would be condemned to hell. But that's not what it is because he already took up the cross. So if he took up the cross and he bore your burden, why are you complaining about having to do the full presentation? Why are you complaining about having to do an extra floor and clean an extra floor, paint an extra floor, uh, having to, 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 to do extra, having to drive further, having to take an extra call? Why, why are you complaining about a call when he's already taken what he did for you? You ask why, why, why do I have to do it? Why do I have to do it? Jesus. That's it. That's the only answer. I don't got nothing else for you. So if you want to go anywhere else and look for some other answer, you're not going to find it. It's always Jesus. Why do I have to do this? Jesus. Why do I have to walk in excellence? Jesus. Why do I have to do more? Jesus. Why do I have to go ahead and take someone else's work? Jesus. Why do I have to bear this? Jesus. Why do I have to go through this? Jesus. Why do I have to help them? Jesus. Why do I have to give? Jesus. Every question you have, immediately after you ask it, you think it, you complain about it, say Jesus. Because that's it. That's the answer. I don't got nothing else. There's nothing else on the test. I gave you the answer. It's Jesus. That's all it is. It's Jesus. Simon was obedient. The Bible says in Matthew 5, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them too. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. I want to focus on 41 right quick. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them too. Simon did not volunteer. He was told. He was forced. Simon did not plan for his day to go like this. He did not wake up and say, hmm, I wonder if there's a crucifixion that's scheduled for today, and I'm going to go ahead and see it, and when I see it, I'm going to go ahead and step into it. I'm going to be the person that does the good deed for the day. I'm going to take up this guy's cross. Everybody's going to be talking about me. They're going to know where I'm from. I'm going to get all this attention. Everything's going to be good. <laughs> nope. He didn't do none of that. It was unexpected, and life is full of the unexpected. I didn't choose this. This isn't mine to bear. I didn't ask for this. I didn't volunteer for this. But Jesus says, if they tell you to go one, you go two. And if they tell you to take the cross, you take the cross. 
And after you're done dropping off the physical cross, you take the cross. And you take the cross wherever you go. I believe maybe it was one mile to go ahead and get the cross to its destination and drop it off with Jesus. I think it was another mile to go ahead and be able to tell people that you carry the cross for this man. Because we're going to talk about it in just a moment. He was so close to the experience. He was so close to Jesus that I can't even imagine somebody going through that. Ooh, I can't even imagine somebody getting so close to Jesus yet being able to deny the impact. I, can't, I cannot imagine someone having to carry the cross, walk maybe feet from Jesus, see this, and not get to feel the presence of God. I can't imagine anyone that comes through here and bows before God at the altar and yet can deny the experience that they had. There's no possible way that I can comprehend that. It don't make sense to me. When you've come so close to touch Jesus, you can't deny it. They don't ask. They don't beg. The Greek word here, we're going to learn some Greek today, and I'm going to mispronounce it, okay, is A-G-G-A-R-E-U-O. Okay, write that down. You're going to learn some Greek. A-G-G-A-R-E-U-O. And the reason why I spelled it twice was so that I can read it again and say it in my head a couple of times. Agar-U-O. Best I can do. And it means to force into government service. Sometimes you got to do what someone tells you to do. He didn't feel like it. It wasn't something that he chose, but someone told him to do it. Look at this. What the devil meant to destroy you, God will take for the good. He wasn't called to government service. He was called the kingdom service. That's a big deal. You're not called to SVCC service. You're called to kingdom service. You're not called to Pastor Jeff service. You're called to kingdom service. You're not called to my service. You're called to kingdom service. You're not even called to serve the homeless. You're called to serve the kingdom. It's in serving the kingdom that you go ahead and you get to experience serving the homeless, get to experience clothing those that need it. You get to experience feeding those that are hungry. You get to experience those things. You're called to kingdom service. You're not called to SVC service. You're not called to USA service. You're not called to the service of the government. You are called to Jesus service. You are called to kingdom service. You are called to eternal service. Those are, that's the service that you are called to. He was called to God's service. You're doing God's service. You're doing God's work. You're doing kingdom business. Simon's name means he has heard, listened, obedient. We have to pray for Simon ears tonight. We have to pray for Simon heart tonight. He was told, he heard, he was obedient. We are told, we hear, we walk away. If it doesn't align with me, I don't need it. If it doesn't fit right with me, I don't need it. If I can't comprehend it, I don't need it. Be cool with not knowing. I learned that this weekend. Be cool with not knowing. You don't know, that's fine. It's okay. Trust and ask. Trust and ask. Trust and ask. Trust and ask. Trust and ask God. Even when it comes to giving. When it comes to giving, just do what you're told. Do it because the pastor asked you to. Beyond that, do it because God asked you to. Do it because God asked you to. And if you have a problem and it's not in your heart and it's not stirring in your heart, you don't have the heart to give, do it and ask God. Do it and ask. Ask from God. Ask God to give it to you. Ask God to help you understand. Ask God to work on your heart. Ask God. We need to hear and we need to be obedient. See, Jesus went ahead of Simon. It says that again, that that they put the cross on him to follow Jesus. Luke 9 says this. It says, Then he said, this is Jesus, said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when, it comes, when he comes into his glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. So understand this. Taking up the cross correlates to denying yourself and being shameless of Jesus. So when you take up your cross, you're not ashamed of Jesus. When you take up your cross, you deny yourself. 
they're related, they're correspondent, they go hand in hand. When you deny the cross, you are losing life. You are forfeiting self, and you are ashamed of Jesus. Taking up the cross might feel like death, but it's not death. And when you take up your cross, Jesus says, you will not taste death until you see the kingdom when you take the cross. So there is a correlation between taking up the cross and seeing the kingdom. So when I take up the cross, I have access and vision to the kingdom. When I take up the cross, it's heaven here on earth. You heard the prayer before. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That's right now. Yes, I'm waiting to get to heaven, but this is right now. I can see heaven on earth right now. And what's my access to it? The cross. The cross is. You want to see the kingdom? The cross. Pick it up. You don't want to see it? You ashamed to have it? Leave it. Leave it there. But I'm telling you, pe- people talking about you anyways. I'm telling you, people are going to judge you anyways. They might as well judge you for doing the right thing and not doing your thing. Okay? People, go ahead and pray on the light rail. People talking to themselves on it anyways. Okay? You're just going to fit right in. You know exactly who I'm talking about. You got Sasha talking to Stephen, yet it's the same mouth moving. Okay? It's all right. You can go ahead and talk to God. Maybe somebody's going to hear your prayer and be like, who are you talking to? And then you get to tell them. Okay? But get this. Jesus led Simon, followed. The Bible says your favor goes before me. So as he takes the cross, I can only imagine every step Jesus takes, he walks in his footsteps. He takes his lead. And he walks in favor. And he walks in the glory of God. And he walks in the presence of God. And he walks in the anointing. And he walks in that experience. Every step that he takes, I'm going to focus on Jesus. Jesus is walking before me. I might have to carry this cross, but I want to go wherever Jesus is going. And if you continue reading that scripture further on your own time, you're going to see that the crowd follow him. Why does the crowd follow him? Because the crowd follows the person with the cross who was following Jesus. You want to be followed? You want people to get, you to, 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 to get attention on, on your behaviors and your actions and your heart? Take up the cross. Because then they see you, then they're curious, then they'll follow you, and because you're following Jesus. Take up the cross. Take up the cross. See, it might feel heavy, but the Bible says that God will uphold us as we carry our cross. So in Isaiah 41, it says this, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you in my righteous hand. So while he was carrying this cross that wasn't his to bear, while it felt heavy, while it was hot, while people might have been mocking them, whatever it may have looked like, I can just imagine God's hand saying, You got this, Simon. I called you for this. People were going to remember you for this. They're going to know who you were. They're going to know who you are. They're going to know that I used you. They're going to know that I had a purpose for this. They're going to know that on April 28th, 2019, somebody was going to preach on this. And chains were going to be broken. And lives were going to be saved. And people were going to be led to the cross. And people were going to take up their cross. And people were going to take up the cross of others. I got a plan for you. I'm holding you in my hand, Simon. I got you. Just a little bit further. Just a little bit further. It's not a suggestion. Don't try to not fear. Don't not fear when things seem okay. It's a command. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. And it tells you the answer why. Because he is with you. He was with Simon. He will be with you. Even while Jesus couldn't physically hold up the cross, God's hand was still holding up Simon. The cross makes a way. I said it before, it wasn't a tool for death. It's a key to the kingdom. And it says, for the son of man came to seek and save the lost. That's the point. One of the coolest illustrations I've ever seen, been told, described, taught, was that sometimes it's hard for us to really understand God because we're up here, or he's up here. A God in a distant future that we can't see to, we can't relate to, we, he, he's just out there. Does he actually even hear me? And Chad, you want to come up here right quick? And we have this mindset that God is up here trying to pull me up to heaven. 
And beyond that, Chad's giving himself some, some, he's holding up some of his weight, but, but God wants to carry all of our weight. No, believe, believe me, God can carry all of our weight, but if, if Chad let go, it, it gets even harder to pull him up. I can't do it. I can't bring him up to my level. So we survey God. We survey God that came down to our level. He came down to our level for you and for me. But oh my gosh, God told me, you know what? Take what you learned and take it a step further because there's so much more than him just coming down to our level. He did a lot more. I'm going to switch it up. Casey, Kylie, Tabby, come here. Because this is actually real life. This is real life. He came down. I said the cross makes a way. He came down and he bore the cross for us. And so he comes down to save us and he gets down to our level. I need you girls over here. Okay. And so each and every day, Danny, while you take up your cross and you take up the cross and you teach these teenagers to come up, this is the thing, this is heaven. And you can't get up there on your own, okay? And God can't pull you up. He, he came down for you. So what does he do? I need you guys to come over here. Because the cross makes a way. Jesus takes the cross and he holds on to it. And it's heavy. And I don't got balance. And I'm moving around. And they're going to step on the cross because the cross makes the way. And I want you girls to go ahead and step on the cross and go on the stage. Because that is the way you get to heaven. It's through the cross. It's through the cross. Don't worry about hurting me. It's all right. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll get some heating pads later. I want you to just go up and I want you to just climb up. I want you to just climb up. Just go ahead and jump up. You're fine. You're fine. Okay? Just go ahead. Just climb up. Just climb up. Step up. And that's what he does. Every time you bear a cross, somebody is able to step on it and climb up and climb up and climb up. And because you bear your cross, you have an opportunity to get to heaven. Somebody else got an opportunity to get to heaven. All right, step down. You're a liability now. All right, you girls can have a seat. Go ahead and give it up for our girls. They didn't know they were going to do that, as you can obviously tell. But you can still preach off of that illustration because sometimes it takes more hands to get somebody to the cross and let them climb up. Gosh, I got to work out. I tried to find the lightest kids that we had. The cross is key. The cross is access. The cross makes a way. I want you to take that cross. And on whatever side you didn't write on, I want you to pick one person. And I want you to describe their cross. And you writing it on there is saying, I'm going to help them take up that cross. Maybe you just write the name of the person on that cross. And say, I'm going to help them bear it. I'm going to help them carry it. I'm going to choose to rub up my life against theirs. I'm going to choose to help them take on their circumstances. I'm going to choose to help them take the cross. Maybe they're not even taking up their cross. Maybe you got to take them to the cross. Some of you had to be taken to the cross first. Some of you had to be taken to the presence and given the experience and shown the love before you had your eyes open. Sometimes I got to take people to the cross before they can take up their own cross, before they can access heaven through the cross. So write that name down. And before we continue and we go any further, you have to give it up before you can take it up. The reason why you can't take up your cross is because you won't give up your problems. Said it this morning, it is so natural and so like us to just dwell in our problems. It doesn't matter how many balloons that we burn and let them go away. It doesn't matter how many times we give up anger. Sometimes I'm more attracted to the anger. Sometimes I want to sit in the anger. Sometimes I want to go back to the anger. It feels better. It's my comfort zone. It's my blankie. I want it. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel safe. It's what I know. I need the anger. I need it. I need that behavior. I need it. I need that relationship. It's what makes me, me. You don't need it. And you can't carry your cross. And you definitely can't carry your cross and someone else's cross by still carrying your problem and still carrying your circumstance. So you got to give it up before you can take it up. So as you stand with me tonight, 
And don't get it twisted, we're still not done. We still got two more hours. <laughs> Maybe you could identify last week if you were here with some kind of issue on any one of those balloons and you put it on the cross and you let it go. But at some point throughout the week, you crawled back to it. You went going back and snatched it. You went back and you were sneaky and you took it. Whatever it may be, maybe you still have it, but you can't have it and do what we're called to do here in this community and in this world if you still have it. Your hands are full, so give it up. You can't take up the cross with full hands. So on one hand, you are going to go ahead and you're going to carry your cross. And on the other hand, you're going to give up whatever you got to give up. You got to give it up. You got to give it up. So come to the altar and give it up because we can't do more work tonight until you give it up. people in the aisle I need people to move up I need people to move up and if you're still in your seat that's okay I promise you ain't nobody judging you but it costs something to move up here and don't let that be the reason why you aren't motivated or inclined to do so why would you pay extra money for a close seat to a concert or a game because the experience is completely different when you're up there and you got the players right in front of you playing, okay? You, got, you can hear the coach yelling, you can hear the players talking. You, you're right there, you got the band in front of you. You can, you, can, you, can take, you can feel the energy. It costs something. It's gonna cost you extra to move up here. Don't let that be the reason. Don't let the price be the reason why you don't move up here. If you don't feel so inclined, you don't have to. That's okay, we still love you. But I wanna read this verse and I don't want anybody to sing it I want you to receive it. I want you to to hear it. We're going to go to that first verse. Are you hurting and broken within? Are you overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst from the drink of his well? Jesus is calling. This is for you because I can't hit that last slide. I can't hit this last point without you saying yes. I'm so tired, Pastor Danny. I'm so overwhelmed. I just can't anymore, man. I just can't anymore. I don't have anything else to give. I got no energy. I got no time. I got no heart anymore. Whatever this sin is that I'm dealing with, it's just too much. I don't even want to do it. I don't even want to do it. I don't know why I do it. I hate it. It makes me feel gross. I can't deal with it no more. I just feel so empty. I just want some rest. I just want uh, to drink from whatever you're drinking from. I just want to eat from wherever you're eating from. I just want to experience what you're feeling. You keep yelling at me each and every week to love Jesus, to experience Jesus' love, to be overwhelmed by his love and his goodness, but I just can't. I just can't anymore. This is for you. This is for you because before we can ever get to them, we got to work on you. So that's why we sing that. 
That's why we sing that chorus, because if you answered yes to any of those questions, this is your answer right here. It says right there. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought away. You're forgiven tonight. You made that step. You're giving it up. And no come to the altar. You're saying, I want it. I need it. I need you, Jesus. And he's saying you're forgiven tonight. He paid the price with his blood. So God, I lift up every single need. I lift up every single heart of repentance to you. And I pray that you would receive it. And I pray that you would give us forgiveness. And we receive that forgiveness. And we believe in that forgiveness. And whatever we gave up tonight... We're not picking it back up. We're letting it go. I don't want it anymore. I don't need it. It don't make me feel good. I know how it makes me feel. I know what it makes me do. I know what it does to my life. I don't want it anymore because I know what is ahead of me. And I'm choosing to take up my cross. And I'm choosing to follow Jesus tonight. And this is my last point because we cannot work on anything else until we worked on you. We can go ahead and pull up that slide for me. This is the last point. We are called to carry and comfort at the same time. You're called to carry your cross and comfort people. In 2 Corinthians, says, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles, so that when we comfort those in any trouble with them or with the comfort that we ourselves receive. So he gives us comfort. He gives us compassion. And it's with that same compassion and comfort that we comfort others. It's what you're called to do. Yes, you come here and you get refilled. You're going supposed to do your own private devotions and get refilled. And you're supposed to comfort. We're supposed to comfort. I've done my job and I've bore your burden so that I could get you to the cross. You need to get other people to the cross. You need to carry your cross so that they can understand what a cross even is and what it means to carry it and what it did for you and what it did for them so that that way they can take up their crosses. I understand. I understand that it's hard to carry up a cross. But if I do what I'm called to do, I can carry my cross and comfort you at the same time. And it says this, by the comfort we receive from God, I can't comfort you on my own my own strength. I can't comfort you with my own ideas. Stop trying to comfort people based off of how you were comforted when you, got, when you grew up. It won't work. You don't have that capacity. It's only by the comfort of God. It has to be from God that you give to other people. You are called to carry the cross for other people. The world is crying out, church. The world is crying out. The world is in need of Christians that'll step up. Stop coming on just Sundays. Give Monday a try. Give Tuesday a try. Give your workplace a try. Give your home a try. Give your kids a try. Give your cousins a try. Give grandma a try. Give somebody. There's no way that you can hold on the key to salvation and not give it to somebody. There's no way. How would you, how could you ever hold on to heaven from people? Don't hold on to heaven from people. Don't hide it. Don't keep it to yourself. That's so selfish. Don't do that. I need people that are going to understand that the world needs Jesus. The world needs you to help them to Jesus.
transformative moments like the one we are experiencing right now. Holy Spirit, I thank you for moving in a mighty way upon us and within us. I thank you for Pastor Danny and for the transformative message that you placed on his heart and deposited into his spirit for us to receive and deposit into ours. I pray that we take it with us as we meet these doors. And as we walk out, we are different people than how we walked in. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, but most importantly, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love that you give us every single day. We pray all of these things in the mighty, transformative name of Jesus and everybody says.